All right, we're continuing the Tzavat Arivaj, the Holy Baal Shem Tov, um, number 81, an important principle. Attach yourself to the Creator, blessed be He, and in that state of attachment, pray for some need of your household, or do or say something, though there is no need for that act or speech. Do so in order to train yourself to have your thought attached to the Creator, blessed be He, even when you are involved in actions or speech relating to material matters, especially related to material matters, to become accustomed to a state of the vacuous at that time, a state of attachment. So I think the note explains it very well. The ideal service of God is not by separating yourself from the world and physical reality. We're not here to be angels and we're not here to be animals. We're here to be humans. That means I'm here to use the physical and the spiritual and allow it to work in harmony. So therefore, the most deepest thoughts have to be able to be connected to the f most lowest physical level. And that's why, by the way, why eating or sexuality, which the Ramchal says are the two places where we have to be very um, careful about because that's where we can be the most holy or the most unholy, is because since those two actions are the most physical, the most uh, yeah, the most animalistic, the most materialistic, the most pleasurable in the physical world, that's why they can be a tremendous rectification for what is the most holy. Because I'm attaching the highest light to the lowest, to the lowest physical level. And that's why it's tremendous rectification. So when one is attached to God, when one uh, is eating or when one is having intimacy, it, he, it's an incredible rectification. One is actually accomplishing a lot for the world. So on the contrary, the latter may be sublimated to holiness. The physical can be must be sublimated to holiness the principle of acknowledge him in all your ways that how that's um right um uh, i forgot the password exactly <laughs> this however is the precarious and ha a precarious and hazardous task thus you must work your way into it the advice given here is to train yourself into the frame that frame of mind by gradually introducing mundane involvements during the safe time of vacuous of attachment. So while I'm attached to God, okay, I'm going to eat, I'm going to pray for eating, I'm going to think of eating and, and how it connects to God and how, um, how eating can attach myself to God. So by he says, uh, when you are involved in action or speech relating to material matters, um, that's that's when you do it. When you pray for it, when you do or you say something about it. Even though there's no need to do that act, you do it anyway. I, you, I think I've, I'm thinking of God, and I'm going to take my broom and start brooming by being attached to God. I'm brooming and I'm attached to God, something like that. Or you say, "Oh, I'm watching the dishes, but I'm attached to God when I wash the dishes." Somehow, my washing of the dishes has something to do with God and the highest spiritual levels. I don't know what it is, but I, as I do it, I want to stay attached to God. So you do things like that. I'm driving my car or I'm talking to the mailman and I'm still attached to God. 
I'm aware that it has a high, is it is a purpose, it connects to something higher in heaven, even though I do something here that seems completely irrelated to the spiritual world. So that's that's the train. So he says you have to try like that. So this will acclimate you to the reverse. You will be able to invoke Dvekas during times of one involvement. So you will be able to, I'm going to do the dishes. And why do the dishes? Like, oh, I want to think of God. Okay, so why do I do the dishes? I'm doing dishes and I'm thinking of God, right? It's two different ways. One, I'm thinking of God, I'm going to do the dishes, or I do the dishes and I'm thinking of God. So, two ways. So that's how we train, you can train ourselves. 82, 83. Okay, number 82, 83. One merits Dvekus by Hidbodedus from people. Say, someone who wants to really be attached to God, he needs to be secluded from people. By, and not only that, by writing secrets of the Torah. When you write secrets of the Torah, which is Kabbalah and things like that. And by performing the Yehudim known from Rabbi Yitzhak Luria of Blessed Memory. Which is right, the acts of unification. So he says three things. You can really be attached to God on a deep level when you are alone. It's just you and God able to connect. And also the second the second way was when you learn Torah deeply um, the mis right, the mystical part of Torah okay the concept the concealed aspect of the soul of the Torah connects with the concealed aspect soul of man and binds it to the concealed aspect of the Holy One Blessed Be He. When we learn Torah, this can connect ourselves really deeply, especially if you learn the secrets of the Torah, because you're connected to the soul, and therefore, since the soul is what the, where the Dvekus happens, then you're able to attach to Hashem with it through the Torah. And Yehudim. Your Yehudim is myst the mystics, no, the Kabbalists are very empathic on the special virtue in joining the. No, sorry, sorry. I'm reading the wrong thing, the wrong note. So, meaning Yehudim is when one is. Yehudim is unification. It means that. Like I was, we were saying before, I'm doing the dishes and I'm thinking of God. I'm unifying the physical. I understand that this physical is connected to is connected to something higher. So, but there are many different levels do that. So, when unifying different names of God, understanding when I say Shema Israel Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad, that's a type of Yehudim. Now, I don't know Yehudim. I don't explain Yehudim, <coughs> but the idea is to use names of God and the, like understanding of deep concepts um, so that I unify by the concept of Yehud to man. It's like a man and woman and Yehud. So they're together alone and they become one. The idea is to be able to merge two concepts together, two realities, two opposite forces. So when one is able to do that with God's name, I mean, certain type of meditation, then one is able also to be attached to God. When Now, he says, when performing Yehudim, meditate on God's greatness to the best of your ability. Also, the scrupulous, be scrupulous in rising at midnight and to join day and the night with Torah and prayer. Okay, so this all this enables us to really be attached to God on the deepest level. And Torah and prayer, because during the night, during the night, you learn Torah and then you start davening. 
um, has to do with Tikkun Chatzad also. But those are all ways to really attach oneself to God on the deepest level. Number 84. Mm, 484. Okay, number 84. Shifra Shmini, Shemin, an explanation from the complementary on the Torah, Parsha Shmini states Remove the Yetzirah from your heart. As God is singular in the world, so too your service must be singular, singular, singularly devoted to Him. This is an important principle. Man must always have but a singular thought in the service of the Creator. Blessed be He. Thus, it is written, God made it that they will fear Him. And God has men, made men upright, but they sought out manifold contrivances. That is, your manifold thoughts cause you to be confused. I well, want to try to understand what that means. Have in mind that everything in the world is filled with the Creator, blessed be He. Everything that comes about through the thoughts of men with various devices even the most trivial thing happening in the world is all by His providence, blessed be He. The little fly crossing the path, a leaf falling from the tree, some vapor coming out of the waterfall, all this most simple stuff. It's all from Hashem. Thus, it should make no difference to you whether you aim, your aim was achieved as you wished or not. Everything that happened, even things that are bad, you're not happy or not about what's happening. Even if the what's happening is not right in our eyes or even in the eyes of justice, uh, in, in the eyes of, of, of what people say is justice. So, uh, But at the end... Whether you aim, you know, whatever has the consequence, the consequence, at the end, Hashem is in charge of that, is in control. As everything comes from the Creator, you know that it is best for you when things did not happen as you wished. So, it is best for me, even though this was so painful, and it was torturous, it was sad, and unfair and unjust that's probably the hardest thing in the world to be able to achieve it's really taking the darkness and accepting that that pure that looks like pure darkness and completely evil and unfair and just is completely light it's really god running the world and saying that that's the best thing that should have happened to you and he loves you there's nothing harder than that because if we can deal with that we can deal with anything obviously Bear in mind that everything, whether in the world of the spheres, meaning the spheros, the world of the angels, or the world of the throne, Bria, so Yetzirah, Bria, and uh, Asiya, Yetzirah, Bria, the spheres okay, can be the actually the, the planets. But here, the notes they do Asiya, Yitzia, Bria. So we're the three lower world of the three five, four dimension world, or five dimensions, depend if you include Adam Kadmon. But he says, all is as nothing before him, best be he. For all are within the vacated space of his constricted light, of his self contraction. And everything came into being by means of a single utterance. It's 
So even though there were 10 steps, everything was included in the first step. So everything was there. Everything that's happening is happening within God, so to speak. Everything is includes everything else. Why then should you be drawn after anything desirable in those worlds when all is but a single utterance of God? Meaning there's so many different things. The only thing you should want is God. I, only, God. I don't care about anything else in the world. I just want God. I don't want to eat. I don't want to sleep. I don't want a, a, a wife. I don't want children. I don't want anything. The only thing I want is God. Nothing else. No other pleasure. The only pleasure I desire is God. Why should we want anything else? Why am I drawn about any other desire or pleasure? It is better to attach yourself beyond the world to that which is primary, to the Creator as be He, than becoming attached to something that is subordinate. Attach yourself to the source of everything. Why you attach yourself to everything, pieces from God, sample from God? Anything else is not necessarily. My intention. So therefore, it's much easier to say, I just want to attach myself to God Himself. Nothing. I don't want, any, I don't want anything else. This is what the Zohar means by stating, Happy are the righteous who know to fix their will upon the supernal king and not upon this world and its vain desires. For all the worlds are dis destined to destruction. One day everything will disappear. Everything I see, nature, people... The, this whole world is going to disappear. It's all an illusion. It's all a temporary experience of life. Just like when you leave, you die, and now you, this, you're not here. This all disappears. So what have? So you go back to God, to the source, which is the thing that you could have been attached to since the beginning, but you got distracted by the things there. Now the thing is that the things they are also a part of God, but the problem is that it's sometimes you attach yourself to the thing there, and then you're disconnected from God. So. That's the danger. You, you, you stay in the parts of God that is illusion instead of the part of God that is not illusion. So what do we do? Okay, here, just to note that the whole, all the worlds that stand for this are to destruction. He say in Sanhedrin 97a that it's not, it's not meant literally, but it refers to the destruction of all negative aspects of the universe being renewed on a sublime level of purity. Meaning there's going to be an evolution. It's not it's like it's going to disappear. No, there's, there's going to be a reality. It's just going to, it's going to be an evolution. It's going to be transcending everything that we saw before. So it's like it all disappears. It's not going to look like the way it looks now. Thus, always bear in mind to attach yourself to the Creator, blessed be He, with a complete love that is greater than for anything else in the world. For every good thing is in this world, for every good thing in this world, rooted in Him, blessed be He. The Sefer Hasidim says that about the mitzvah of loving, uh, loving Hashem, it says loving Hashem. Even the man or woman that haven't been with a spouse and they're craving the love of the other, even the love that you have for your kids, any of those love that you experience, he says, is nothing compared to the true desire and craving pleasure emotional thing that you can have with God. Everything here is a sample. The real, real thing is God. There's no more powerful God, love than God has for you and you can have for God. You want the highest pleasure, highest pleasure? This is the highest pleasure. It's God Himself. So why do you get distracted? We have to We, we, we feel sad and we're in pain, we're suffering, that I don't have that type of pleasure, that type of pleasure, that type of love. Really, and again, I'm 
not claiming that I am on that level, I don't think I'm on that level. <laughs> I'm far from that level. But I'm trying to try to connect to understand when we feel alone sometimes, I feel I don't have a spouse, I don't have a best friend, I don't have friends, I don't have children, I don't have whatever, a rav or whatever. So, so one needs to come to a place where I don't need any of that. If Hashem give it to me, great. That means and I have I can use it to, to to connect to God. But that means that if I don't have all that, I have technically have the ability to connect to God on the highest, highest, highest level directly, directly to Him, because all the pleasure we can experience with those people we can experience with God and more. So why do we get stuck with the little things? Easier said than done, of course. For every good thing in this world is rooted in God. Let's be. So think to yourself, I always wish to bring gratification unto God and to serve Him constantly. That, that, that's, that's what you have to think of yourself all the time. Don't only focus on God. Your thought should always be attached to the supernatural world, to Hashem. This is alluded in the meaning of the verse, He shall not leave the sanctuary. Sanctuary is not just a physical thing. He sh it means, uh, based on Gemara Sanhedrin, he shall not leave his holy status, your own holy status. Always stay in your holiness, in presence of God, attached in your mind to God, your heart, design God, everything you do is to love God. Why do I go to God work? Because I love God. Why do I get married? Because I love God. Why do I have children? Because I love God. Why do I re rest? Because I love God. Why do sh Everything you do is because you love God. I do it out of love for God. You created me and I'm trying to be in love with you with God. The biggest challenge is that we don't see how this helped me love God. I don't feel the love for God. But because you don't see the good in it, you don't see the meaning of it. Once you see that all those things are uh, actually part of a way, the meaning it can be used to love God more and more. To love God on the level where of the body and emotions and intellect. So I have to try to find how I can do all of that that I'm doing, that as human beings are doing, and feel that this is love. This is love, this is love. Right? That's, that's, that's a challenge. So when you have to speak at length about mundane matters, think to yourself that you are descending from the supernatural world to below. Be as one who leaves his house for the outside with the intent for the outside with the intent to return right away thinking throughout his departure when can I return home so so like, like even when I have to go in a conversation that seems to be completely disconnected from God the only thing I want to do is to then be able to bring my thoughts back to God so too even when you speak of mundane matters always think of the supernatural world for there is your primary abode with the creator there is your primary body with your creator. That's where you belong. That's where your thoughts belong. That's where your heart belongs. There's a man is in love with his wife. So no matter where he's speaking, he's constantly, he keeps remembering his wife. No matter what. This is the only thing I want to think is of my wife. I don't think I want to go back, my feelings to go back to feeling the love for my wife. That's 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 what I do. Why do I work for my wife? Why do I do things to, to be with my wife? Why do I do it's all to go back to that moment? So there are little distractions. Those distractions don't have to separate me from that intention that I just want to be with my wife. And immediately restore your thought to the original attachment. David does say to his son Shlomo Melech, I am going the way of all the earth. Meaning like a person on a journey with his mind and desire set to return home with the greatest haste. Um...
So, right. So that, that's what David Amelech was expressing through, through the king. As the way of the earth. So using the way of the earth actually to connect to the concept of that's, that's what we should want to do uh, with our soul. The right, so there's a note here. The righteous consider this world insignificant and their dwelling here is but temporary. Even as a stranger yearns to return to his birthplace, they too long to return to their root and origin. So that's all what we should want to achieve, to just go back to that place where my soul was once, but we can experience that also in this world. So Bezat Hashem, we should all be able to achieve that level of desire to be constantly with God and to only think of Him all the time. We see that the Baal Shem Tov, as we go, keeps talking, it's always about prayer. 90% of the time is, what do you think? What do you feel? What do you pray? Where are your thoughts? What... The goal is to be constantly attached to be Davik Bashem. That was the Ramchal big thing. Tvekus, that's all what's about. And all the challenge here have to be challenged that doesn't distract me, but actually instruct me. Everything that happens that is hard and dark, don't let it be a distraction. Let it be a lesson. But sometimes the lesson seems too harsh and too hard, too painful. The question is, how can I not let myself be distracted by the pain to the point that I, I, God is out of the picture, or I'm angry at God? If we understand that really every darkness and every pain is a it's a, it's a surgery. It actually, those does, does some good, which I cannot understand because I'm not a surgeon. But I understand if I take every pain as a surgery, I understand this surgery is necessary. That pain is necessary. I don't have to be angry at God. I don't have to be in in hate life and hate God. So this is a type of resilience and very strong understanding that we need to gain. I think it's much more challenging for people who are who experience pain since uh, suffering from the beginning when they're young, because they never had the chance to develop that ability to to look at the things like that way, and to be David Bashem before it happened. So that's that's a big question. That's really difficult, and that's where we need healing. So God willing, we should all be able to be attached to God in every little possible physical thing that we we do in life. Amen.